Welcome back to our morning prayer this week. Uh, this is our devotion for Tuesday, August 6th. Today's section from the letter to the Philippians that we consider is, is one that I know you've heard before. In chapter 1, the Apostle Paul says, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I think I've used that, uh, that passage as a funeral text for two Christians at their Christian funerals. It's certainly a time of sadness, but a Christian funeral is also a time, or maybe even more so to say it that way, a time of hope and confidence and confession and victory. And that was sort of the predicament that the Apostle Paul found himself in when he wrote this letter. He wrote it while he was under house arrest for preaching the gospel. A quick read of Acts chapters 21 through 27 will tell you how he ended up in that situation in the first place. Now, in this section, he was awaiting another trial and a verdict of maybe being freed or maybe being executed for the sake of the gospel. But as he expresses later on in this letter, Paul had learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. It really had everything to do with Paul's purpose in life, which he shares with us in the previous verse. He says, Now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. One commentator said that ever since Paul's miraculous conversion on the road to Damascus, he had a magnificent obsession with the good news of Jesus as Lord and Savior. So during his trial, he knew that he would confess Jesus if he was set free after the trial, he could continue his ministry and travels and bring Christ to more people in more cities. If he was detained for even longer, he knew that he would continue to write Christians and have Christian visitors during his house arrest and encourage them in that way. Even if he was condemned to death, he knew he would give the ultimate testimony of and commitment to Christ through his martyrdom. You and I have that same contentment and confidence in Christ. Every new day we live is a gift from God, and we know that we don't deserve it. We know that we've been set free from the power of sin and death and the devil to declare God's marvelous praises. That motivation to live for Christ becomes even stronger when we hear that Christ daily and fully forgives all sins to me and you and all believers. 
And of course, death for us as Christians is not just a gain, like Paul says. It's our whole goal. Christ has reworked the doorway of death from leading to eternal death in hell to now leading to eternal life in heaven for all those who put their trust in him. Yes, I think we want to live long and happy lives here on earth, and to we want to watch over our families and grow up and... and <clears throat> Welcome back to our morning prayers for St. John's Lutheran Church in McGuanago. This is our recorded devotion for Tuesday, August 6th. Today's section from the letter of Philippians is one that I know you heard before. In chapter 1, the Apostle Paul says, For me to live is, to, is Christ, and to die is gain. I think I've used that passage for a couple of Christians at their funerals. A funeral is certainly a time of sadness, even for a Christian. But at a Christian funeral, it's even more so a time of hope and confidence and confession and victory. That was sort of St. Paul's situation when he wrote this letter. He wrote it while he was under house arrest for preaching the gospel. A quick read of Acts chapters 21 through 27 will tell you how he ended up in that predicament in the first place. Now, as he wrote this letter, he was awaiting another trial and a verdict of being freed or being maybe possibly executed too. But as he expresses later on in the letter, he had learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. It really had everything to do with Paul's purpose in life, which he shares with us in the previous verse. He says, now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. One commentator said that ever since his uh, miraculous conversion on the road to Damascus, Paul had a magnificent obsession with the good news of Jesus as Lord and Savior. So during his upcoming trial, he knew that he would confess Jesus. In that trial, if he was set free, he would continue to uh, uh, share the gospel in his travels and bring it, bring Christ to more people in more cities. If he was, he was detained for an even longer amount of time, he would continue to write Christians from his house arrest or have Christians visit him during that time and encourage Christians in that sense. Even if he was condemned to die, he would give the ultimate testimony of his commitment to Christ through his martyrdom. You and I have that same confidence and contentment in Christ. We know that every new day we live is a gift from God, a, a day that we don't deserve. We've been set free from the power of sin and death and the devil to declare God's praises as we live. That motivation to live for Christ becomes even stronger when we hear that Christ daily and fully forgives all sins to me and you and all believers. And of course, death for us as Christians is not just a gain, like Paul says. It's our whole goal. Christ has reworked the doorway of death from leading to eternal death in hell to now leading to eternal life in heaven for us and all who trust in him. Yes, I know that we want to live long, happy, healthy lives here on earth. We want to watch our families grow up, and we want to experience all that we want to do in life. And there's nothing wrong with thinking that way. But in and through all those experiences, we know that we also want to exalt Christ in everything we say and do. And when it comes to death, we're not afraid of it. We're looking forward to it. Because it's when we lose sin and temptations and sadness and frustrations and disappointment and it's also when we gain a perfect life. It's when we gain peace, unending joy, and perfect knowledge of and service to our Savior Jesus. Those two attitudes, to live as Christ and to die as gain, will help us avoid the extremes of an overattachment to this life or an impatient desire for death. Instead, we'll find true satisfaction in whichever state is the Lord's will for us. God's blessings as you go about your Tuesday. Amen.
God, you have called your servants to ventures of faith of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Speak to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. 